Hey guys, Bolt here. We're here for the summary slash explanation. We're gonna make this a very quick video um, of Chapter Three, Poppy Playtime. So, basically, to kind of run through the floor, Elliot Lug Ludwig founded Playtime Co. They did normal toys, and then they had the Poppy doll, which would be able to interact with kids and even answer some questions. Um, and that's where they got a lot of their, um, popularity from. And Elliot, he ended up losing, uh, his wife divorced him, I think, 1920s, 1930s. Um, and he lost, he went and adopted a child. Well, actually, I'm trying to remember what it was. It sounds like he was doing... Um, a lot of practices to try to bring joy to children all around the globe and all that. Well, no, not around the globe, but just having as many children happy as possible. And he did, did a few risky moves for the company where it would cost them a lot more money to fund than they really had. And it got them into um, financial troubles. Um, and either this was before or after this point, but, um, he ended up having a adoptive daughter, um, to kind of push for others to adopt and he ended up, she ended up dying and he went through the process of learning how to create a sentient life form through someone's, uh, organs and in other body parts like the nervous system and all that are put in there that way they can feel and move and think correctly um and eventually the doctor will call him it he realizes that this was has happened and he starts like trying to understand the process that way they can actually put it into more toys that way those toys can be used um, as a more profit um, margin kind of idea. And then eventually, you know, people started noticing, hey, this is kind of wrong. Um, and the process is going to get slowly discovered by these other employees. Um, employees are slacking. They're not doing their jobs. Um, they have a lot more money being put into a lot of things and they want so to cut costs with employees they make the bigger bodies initiative that way they have like ser servants through these um, bigger toys and the very first one is the prototype the original which currently sounds like it was Ludwig at the very end of his 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 uh, when he was getting aged they used him to throw him into this body but that's only a theory right now. But it really sounds like basically anyone who's of an older age than the kids, um, they kind of lose all memory of what they are, where the kids retain some parts of their life uh, and some kind of a, like connections. Um, and anyways, uh, after him... He shows um, something that they're trying that the doctor tries to learn, which I think is probably the learning curve. the The prototype is very smart. It's very resourceful. It's able to f find ways to to get it what it wants. Um, and that might be what they want is something that's very clever and can do what the prototype does. Um, or it might be some like, like maybe the non-fighting, well, the, the the prototype fights. But anyways, after that, they start play, putting up play care. Play care is kind of the start of this like rotation of hey, we'll don't we'll adopt, we'll have some kids adopted, but we'll have some go through and become the toys. Um, so they make play care their own on-set adoption uh, orphanage 
and basically they make the smiling friends, um, the smiling critters, as kind of like the mascots of this area. Um, and basically all of these are supposed to teach you how to think, be active, you know, this and that. It's a lot of life lessons. Um, and then we go through play care. There's the orphanage itself. There is the school where they would have Miss Delights, which are kind of like the teachers um, and staff of the building. There's the toy store. This is where other toys. Um, basically, they would the kid would go in, choose a toy, and uh, oh, I forgot to explain what the school does, but based on what toy they got, that's the toy they would get turned into. Um, if we looked through the orphanage when, during chapter 3, I think I've already got... Yeah, by... Yeah, so tomorrow on Bolt, there will be part 2 of Poppy. But part 1 already covers the orphanage. In a lot of the rooms, you got to see people's favorite characters. And we came across Kissy Missy's room. We came across where, where Kissy Missy was. Um... Where she probably saw one of her roommates or her friends. Um, we've seen the Huggy Wuggy room. So we probably, if you look around that room and figure out kind of face, we might figure out who Hug Huggy Wuggy probably was. Um, and we just learn of like some kids of, as it goes. Um, and then the school is kind of like the testing. Like who is worth putting into the toys because we need someone who's got the functionalities to do so. So they would test them. Whoever test highs go up to the higher level in chapter two, the whole like play area that would test them in like the matching game, the uh, red light, green light, basically is just the ones with the best like, brain test scores they'd use them as the bigger bigger bodies um we also have the counselor's office this would kind of just like this would bring the kids into like a ring of con like mentality of just like yes we'll cover you but like this is the way you're supposed to be thinking because there's no other adults taking care of these kids the counselors and the teachers uh well, what little teachers were in the school um, are the ones explaining this. Um, and then there is the playhouse, which is just, you know, going around, running around. Um, eventually these bigger bodies start wanting to fight back and the prototype kind of cheers them on from the, from the dark corners of this place. And it sounds like, so he goes to escape and the way to escape required electrical um, two electrical green hands, um, and he hired a kid known as Theo slash Theodore, and he, what, he talked to him, you know, he was like the little creature under your bed, the one, like, little imaginary friend at first, but eventually he got him into looking for files and other things, and when they went to go, he was gonna go help the prototype escape, he got electrocuted by using the grab pack electrical hands and instead of running away the prototype saw this as probably another kid so if this is Ludwig he saw a child suffer he went to go try to help him because he's been so helpful so far and he ends up getting captured again um, and basically the prototype it sounds like he stews now that he's been out he understands the entire like complex he knows how they work so he's got to make a plan to do a full revolt, uh, revolution, um, which is the hour of joy. So basically he'd plan out what would need to happen for them to kill all the employees that would have even a, a, a finger in the ring. Um, you may be innocent and you may not know about the big bodies initiative or what happens with the kids. But you're still part of this company that makes it to where they, they kids are sacrificed to make bigger toys. Um, so, Hour of Joy, I think it's 74 or 
A for. And basically they just go and become savages, kill every single employee. After that, they would bring them down to uh, like a storage area to feast on them at slowly. Um, apparently, in the lore, it's been found that they teach them to want that. Like, they teach them to want flesh and blood. Um, so it's not even... It, it's their instincts to want that. Um, which is probably... Um, Boxy Boo is the first proper Big Bodies initiative. Um, Boxy Boo was the first and used as kind of like the cleanup. So if they want... If they... If someone was missing, or someone was trying to look into it too too far, they'd use Boxy Boo to get rid of the person, um, or they would, you know, hire one of the monsters to get rid of them. Um, and sh basically, it's just eventually, this was their like. Achilles heels just like you made them want to eat they you made them angry and able to be violent um, Especially with Huggy Wuggy who's their security system Which in the very first chapter it's explained that he is supposed to be their surprisingly amazing security um, That they pride themselves on and he's supposed to be so in obedient that he was a perfect specimen, but in the end, he still revolted. Um, and after the hour of joy, it's your character who's an employee that either was sick at home, had something to do, um, caught wind of the hour of joy. It sounds like from chapter two, I believe. That you're a head, head of uh, one of the departments. So that means you have some kind of idea of what could have happened down there. Um, while they haven't really targeted you, most of the toys know that you did work there. And the ones that are violent that don't completely um, want to help you. Kind of like Poppy. Poppy sees you as like the, the pond that they, she can play. But there's people like the prototype and catnap, who was Theo. Uh, they don't even want like they attack you, but they don't really want to kill you. Which is which there's an idea of just like catnap is playing with you, or it's just the prototype wants to kill you himself. Which might be a thing where the prototype actually remembers who he was and wants to kill you personally. Um, but the biggest thing that we have to look at is the character has some kind of relation to Huggy Wuggy. In the nightmare sequences in chapter 3, your nightmare is Huggy Wuggy. Um, there's also a few other things we see through chapter 2. So it's either suggesting easy thing would be just hey you're traumatized but the other idea is that you had some kind of hand on what happened in that um to that why is it why is the huggy wuggy so um dependable and you probably know why um so you have some kind of connection to huggy wuggy and then, so chapter one was just Huggy Wuggy security. Um, and you're kind of like figuring out the base level. Um, just the tip of the iceberg there. And then chapter two is going down and learning about the testing area to figure out who's going to the bigger bodies and all that. Um, we meet uh, Mommy Longlegs, who, oh, her name was Mari. Basically, Catnap was made to release gas that would it's understood that that might be made from the poppy essence so they extract stuff from poppy flowers to make these kids able to be sentient in these toys and that it's believed that this catnap gas will make it to where it makes it very easy for the transfer 
Um, or it makes these subjects easier to point, poke out who would be best for it. And it also causes nightmares and stuff. Well, Marie, I think it was, um, who is Mommy Longlegs, was constantly, like, attacked by this gas constantly. That she, It was an over overstimulation of it. And it ended up doing where it's just like, okay, now that she's got, like, she can't fight back the gas period. There's like it's, it's overexposure. They used her for mommy long legs, um, and then chapter three is kind of just the play care exploring how like the organization system of that worked. Um, the only thing was we kind of also seen the hierarchy of it it's like the original is the top there's of course a rebel a small rebel group kind of like kissing missing and poppy but most of them most of the others would basically branch off of um the prototype the prototype would explain the person who led that area like catnap and mommy long legs and all the underlings from that area like bon uh Bonzo and uh, PJ would listen to Mommy um, and all the little toys that were under them. Um, and, and because they would eventually run out of food from the Hour of Joy, they started eating some of the smaller toys to make up their diet. Um, and it looks like through Project Playtime um, that we get to see that they hired several outsourced employees probably the the prototype did to have some kind of food given to the creatures um by like it sounds like the prototypes tricking them by by making it sound like they're still trying to make toys and that's why project playtime is where they're hunting you down um so yeah it's just creator wants to make toys he loses his wife then he has a daughter, and that daughter dies. He uses her to be the first experiment for the poppy-induced uh, sentience for toys. Uh, the doctor starts researching about it. They start putting them into smaller toys, and they make the bigger bodies initiative to, to make easier employees. Um, the prototype, which is 1006, um, he has something special about him, probably his like learning curve. Um... And he basically is able to escape, start talking to the kids, start talking to the other toys. And he basically builds a mentality against all against the employees and all that. Um, and eventually through the experiments, this play care basically being a, uh, a spawn camp for all these toy, toys, toys. And then chapter two is just who is the best candidates for the toys. Um, and, um, Shep, and then, uh, you are just someone who missed out on the, pro uh, the hour of joy. You're coming back, and it looks like a lot of the bigger bodies, um, they're under the prototype's control, and he's like, get out of here, or he's personally got a vendetta against you and wants to kill you himself. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.